Princess Rosette. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who had two beautiful sons and one little daughter, who had such beautiful golden hair that no one who saw her could help loving her. When it was time for the christening of the princess, the queen invited fairies from all over the world and threw a splendid banquet. Thank you for the wonderful banquet. We shall now ask for your leave. Do not forget your usual good custom. Tell me what is going to happen to Rosette. Your Highness, we fear that Rosette may be the cause of great misfortunes to her brothers. They may even meet with their death through her. That is all we have been able to foresee about your dear little daughter. We are very sorry to have nothing better to tell you. The king and queen were deeply saddened. For the next few days, the king consulted with his ministers and wise men from various parts of his kingdom, but none could come up with a solution. Meanwhile, the queen kept weeping by baby Rosette's cradle. My dear, it seems that there is but one last hope. The king tells the queen that in a great forest near the castle, there lives an old hermit, and that people come from far and near to consult him. Then we better go and ask his advice. Perhaps he will know what to do to prevent the misfortunes which the fairies foretold. They set out very early the next morning on their horses, and the king's men rode behind. When they reached the forest. They dismounted, for the trees grew so thickly that the horses could not pass, and made their way on foot to the hollow tree where the hermit lived. The hermit at once recognized the king and the queen. Welcome, king and queen. What do you come to ask of me? The queen tells him all that the fairies had foreseen for Rosette, and asks what she should do. And the hermit answers that she must shut the princess up in a tower, and never let her come out of it again. The queen thanks and rewards him, and they hasten back to the castle. In a great tower, the princess was kept, and the king and queen and her two brothers would go to see her every day, so that she might not be dull. The eldest brother was called the Great Prince. And the second, the little prince, they loved their sister dearly. Soon after, both the king and the queen were taken ill, and died on the same day. All the bells in the kingdom were tolled. Everybody was sorry, Rosette especially. It is time for you to take the throne. The dukes and councillors put the great prince upon a golden throne, and crowned him with a diamond crown. Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! Now that we are the masters, let us take our sister out of that dull tower which she is so tired of. Good morning, dear brother. Please take me out of this dull tower, for I am so tired of it. Let us get away from this ugly tower, and very soon the king will arrange a grand marriage for you. When Rosette saw the beautiful garden full of fruits and flowers, with green grass and sparkling fountains, she was astonished. Wow! This is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. What is amusing you so much? What is it? It is a peacock. It's a beautiful creature. I declare that I will never marry anyone but the king of the peacocks. But little sister, where shall we find the king of the peacocks? Oh, wherever you like, sire. But I will never marry anyone else. The king and the prince considered how they should find the king of the peacocks. They made a portrait of the princess, which looked very much like her. 
Since you will not marry anyone but the King of the Peacocks, we are going out together into the wild world to search for him. In the meantime, mind you take good care of our kingdom. Thank you for taking all the trouble on account of me. I promise to take great care of the kingdom. The king and the prince set out from the castle. The king and the prince went on and on, so far that no one has ever been farther. They asked everyone they met. Do you know the king of the peacocks? But the answer was always no. At last, they reached a road that had peacocks in every tree, and their cries could be heard a long way off. The road led them to a city where they found men and women dressed entirely in peacock's feathers. They soon saw the king, who was driving about in a beautiful little golden carriage, which glittered with diamonds and was drawn at full speed by twelve peacocks. The king and the prince were delighted to see the king of the peacocks. You look like strangers. Who are you? Sire, my brother is a king, like yourself, and I am a prince. And this is a portrait of our sister, the Princess Rosette. We have come from very far away to ask if you would like to marry her. Is her heart as golden and beautiful as her hair? She is hundred times as good as that. Very well. I will marry her with all my heart and keep her very happy. She shall have whatever she likes, and I shall love her dearly. Only I warn you that if her heart is not as golden and beautiful as that of her hair, I shall punish you. Oh, certainly. We quite agree to that. Very well. Off with you into the kingdom's guest chambers and stay there until the princess arrives. Soon, Rosette received a letter from her brothers saying that the king of the peacocks was found and she was to pack up all her treasures as quickly as possible and come to them as the king of the peacocks was waiting to marry her. The king of the peacocks has been found and he is ready to marry me. Rosette decided to leave her brother's kingdom to the care of the wisest old man of the city. Take charge of everything. Make sure the people are happy and content until the king returns. She sets out, only taking with her her nurse, the nurse's daughter, and her little green dog, Frisk. They take a boat and put out to sea. When Rosette and Frisk fall asleep, the wicked nurse reaches out to the boatman. Do you want to make a fortune? Certainly I do. Well, I will give you a hundred gold coins if you help me throw the princess into the sea. And when she is drowned, I will put her beautiful clothes upon my daughter, and we will take her to the king of the peacocks, who will be only too glad to marry her. <laughs> the thought of getting a hundred gold coins made him agree to the wicked nurse's proposition. The wicked nurse, the boatman, and her daughter picked up the princess along with the feather bed and frisk and threw them into the water. Now luckily, the princess's bed was entirely stuffed with phoenix feathers, which are very rare and have the property of always floating upon water. So Rosette went on floating about as if she had been in a boat. Frisk, who suddenly woke, began to bark. He barked so long and so loud that he woke up Rosette and all the fish who came swimming up around the princess's bed poking at it with their great heads. They have tricked us! The wicked nurse and the boatman were by this time quite a long way off. Let us make haste to land, for we must be quite near the city of the King of the Peacocks. The nurse's daughter put on Rosette's prettiest frock and covered her with diamonds from head to foot. The boat now reached the shore of the kingdom of the King of Peacocks. When she stepped from the boat and the escort sent by the King of the Peacocks caught sight of her, 
They were very surprised. Bring me something to eat, else I will have all your heads cut off. Not only does she not have golden hair, she is wicked too. What a bride for our poor king. She certainly was not worth bringing from the other end of the world. The procession was long and it advanced slowly, and the nurse's daughter sat up in her carriage, trying to look like a queen. She would give slaps and pinches to everyone she could reach. Meanwhile, Rosette and Frisk, with the help of the fish, reached the shore of the Kingdom of Peacocks. Thank you so much, friends. I shall never forget your help and tell your tales to my friends and family. We should hurry up. Lead the way, Frisk. The procession reached the palace where the King of the Peacocks waited with Rosette's brothers to welcome the princess. The false queen stepped out of the carriage and kicked a nearby peacock. Out of my way! What? You two call yourself king and prince? Dare to play me such a trick? Your sister does not have golden hair, and she is definitely not kind. Do you propose that I marry this cold-hearted creature? But she is not our sister. There is a misunderstanding. Lies, lies, and only lies. Gods, let them and their sister be shut in my great tower as prisoners. Stop! Rosette runs towards the king of the peacocks with Frisk behind her. She kneels down in front of the king. Oh, king of the peacocks, I am the real princess Rosette, and she there, dressed as me, is my nurse's daughter. The king of the peacocks was shocked. Rosette explained everything to the king of the peacocks. Guards, seize the nurse and her daughter and bind them with ropes and throw them into the sea. The guards immediately leave the brothers, seize the wicked nurse and her daughter, when Rosette turns towards the king of the peacocks and says, Oh, king of the peacocks, please don't harm them. Please forgive them for their greed got the better of them. If you forgive them, they will surely learn from their mistake and never wish harm upon anyone. The King of the Peacocks was very impressed by Rosette's gesture of kindness towards the wicked nurse and her daughter, despite them trying to harm them. He smiles. Not only is your hair golden, your heart is as golden as it can ever be. I am very impressed. The king of the peacocks forgives the wicked nurse and her daughter. The nurse restores to Rosette all her dresses and jewels and the bushel of gold pieces. The king of the peacocks made ample amends to the king and prince for the way in which they had been treated. The wedding was held at once, and they all lived happily ever after, even Frisk who enjoyed the greatest luxuries and grandest treats, lived happily ever after.